Now, a lot of us like playing this, but everyone gets to make whatever character they can dream up. But what if you thought amongst yourself, hey, there's a lot of YouTube artists and singers and performers and personalities that I think would make great characters in this game. Well, fortunately for all of us, you can actually make any character possible. Want me to prove it? I, I will. This is the first one. We're gonna do a bunch. Let's take D&D &D Beyond and take a personal artist that we all love on this channel. This young lady right here. <laughs> You're not ready for this. It's time for reaction. Now, before we get started, uh, we have to have some, it's, it's D and D, so you have to have mood, mood music. So I think I'll go to, um, one for all Dear stalker pictures. They have a great one. Let's try this one. That'll work. Okay. Let's open up D and D, shall we? Okay. So we're going to come down here. Let's pop this bad boy up. All right. So this is D&D Beyond. For those who do not know what this is, but you know what D&D is. Of course, Dungeons & Dragons has been around since I was a child. Uh, and that's a long time ago. Um, so now they actually have it in an online form. The best part about this form is that not only is it the the D&D platform, but most of the math, conditions, and, and things that were difficult to deal with when we were younger are now all taken care of. So you don't have to worry about all doing constant math, which is nice. So let's start it up. Now, uh, this picture is not going to work because we're talking about Violet Orlandi. So I did find one on Insta Instagram that someone made of her characterization. She loved it. I asked them, hey, can I use it? They're like, sure. So let's let's choose the file. Oh, this one right here. Perfect. There we go. That looks more like Miss Orlandi right there. Uh, so let's go ahead and give her a name. Um, I got it. Orlandi. Let's see here. Come on. Type, stupid. Orlandi Von Hellocene. Hellocene. There we go. It's like Allison, but it works. Okay. Orlandi Von Hellocene. Okay, kind of goes with that thing. Now, we have her picture, what we want. We have the name. Let's talk about the race. Now, I'm going to use very human for this one because the class that I'm going to be picking and how I'm going to be playing it, this will work really, really well for it. Trust me on this. So we're going to go in. Uh, we're going to take very human. And I'm going to go in here. I've already checked out my uh, my positive traits languages i'm gonna pick uh draconic and giant why because why not i'm gonna increase my ability score with dexterity and i think i'm gonna go with mm, i think i'll go with intelligence trust me on this one i know that seems weird dexterity intelligence but when you see the class i'm gonna use to build her you're gonna be oh okay uh, origin proficiencies, we're going to replace that with, I'm going to give her a perception. Um, I, perception is just the best option that I feel for this character. I think it's going to work best. Feet of choice. Because it's a very human, she can start with a special feat. Because of what I plan to make out of her, I'm going to pick crossbow expert. This allows me to ignore the, the, the low times of crossbows. Um, being with in five feet of a, you can be close up um, doesn't impose disadvantage when you use it and i intend to use this quite a lot um when you use attack action and attack with a one-handed weapon you can use the bonus action to attack with the crossbow that you're holding so 
Normally with a crossbow, you gotta be at range, you shoot. With this particular skill, she can hold that hand crossbow in her other hand, hold a rapier in this hand, stab and shoot. Two attacks every round, starting on level one. Kind of feel where I'm going with this? There's only one class that Miss Orlandi should play, and it's Blood Hunter. Yes, the one that's custom built by Mr. Mercer himself. Uh, for those who want to play The Witcher, for those who want to play Van Helsing, for those who want to play, you know, any type of vampire hunter or a hunter of evil by using the skills of evil to fight evil, Blood Hunter. All right, so this is level one, Blood Hunter. We're going to go through our proficiencies. I'm picking these three because for two reasons. Arcana and Religion, because they're intelligence modifiers, and we're going to give her quite a bit of intelligence. But we're also going to take Acrobatics because of Dexterity for Dodge and, and Movement. Okay? The Hunter's Bane in first level. Um... You empower the body to control and shape hemocraft magic, which is blood magic. Using your own blood and life essences to fuel your abilities. Some of your features require your target to make a saving throw to resist the effects. The saving throw is calculated as follows. Eight plus your proficiency bonus plus your intelligence modifier. So now you know why I put that extra ability score point in intelligence. The intelligence is what makes sure that her blood magic cannot be resisted by enemies. That's important. Blood Maledict. Um, this is a first level ability where you channel. Essentially, you will cut your skin, exposing your blood, and it will hurt you from your hit points slightly. And you'll roll a Hemocraft die, which is a, a D4. When you roll that die, whatever number comes up, that comes off your hit points. But it activates your ability. And these abilities come as blood curses. So, the one that I'm picking first, um, she needs to be a level 1. I don't know why we're having level 6 here. Back this up. Okay, let's, let's go through the skills again. We're going to take Acrobats, Arcana, and Religion. Okay. Let's go to the blood curses. I'm going to pick a level one option. This is going to be Curse of the Eyeless. Curse of the Eyeless. Now, the reason why I'm picking the Curse of the Eyeless first, so when she uses this one, let's say she goes into combat, first combat, there's some enemies. She intends to get up close, do some stabby stab shoot action. We're going to set her up where any creature within 30 feet of her if when they do an attack roll, whether it be ranged or or melee, they move in, or even a spell, you can use the reaction to roll a hemocraft, a hemocraft uh, die, which is the blood magic die. You subtract the number that you roll from their hit roll, which means you can actually keep someone from being hit, or even yourself from being hit. Um. And that's the level one curse. Now, we're going to continue on from here. Let's add her abilities at level one. Now, I've already set this up where we have, um, we, in my stat, we use standard array, plus we get a plus bonus to the modifier of two in the game that I play. So we set up our dexterity as our, as our highest number, dexterity. Then we put intelligence, then constitution. A lot of blood hunters go dexterity, then constitution, then intelligence. I'm reversing that a little bit. Only because what I'm trying to do is, yes, she's going to go in a little bit. And she does need a high constitution for her hit points. But I really want that all of her blood curses and other abilities to have a strong output. And you'll see what I'm talking about here in a little bit. But for those who are wondering, we can actually change this up if you like. We can go 13 and 14. Just Let's just say that's the case, okay? So we're going to scroll down. Let's go to our next one. Okay, her background is going to be the investigator. And this is why I do investigator. Um, she's hunting down monsters. And 
The skill proficiencies of insight and, per and investigation are going to help her find items, discover footprints. The insight is going to help her. Per it's like perception. Perception, insight, and investigation are the ways you're going to find things out. By giving her proficiency in these, it's going to help her. Official inquiry is a background feature. Gaining access to people and places to get the information you need. It's easier to get information from townsfolk about what you're facing. Could help her out later. We did her characteristics already, so we wouldn't have to waste a whole lot of time. Her alignment, we're going to make her a true neutral. Why? We never know what she's going to do. Okay, faith. Okay. Uh, we're going to say, God, she is a hype. Uh, she's the boss. Okay. That's just fun play word, you know, saying God's a woman and she's the boss. It's just funny. Okay, lifestyle option. We're going to take modest one GP. Physical characteristics. Hair. Black with blonde streaks. Obviously. Her skin is pale. We're going to go with that. Her eyes in this instance are ruby red. Because we have her blood eyes. Okay, for the drawing that someone, the artist made. Height is 5'6". I don't think it is, but we're going to make her a little bit taller than you would think weight is 145 now i don't want anyone to feel that her weight is either a detriment because she'd be too light or too heavy to where she wouldn't have nimbleness i kind of give her that mid weight age 22 and her gender is female personality con traits i put this in here um her positive personality traits are i had an encounter what believes uh a special affinity with a supernatural creature or event I let people underestimate me, revealing my full competency only to those close to me. Her, obs uh, her ideals, obsession. I've lived this way for so long, I can't imagine it another way. Bonds. I, I've i seen great darkness. I've committed on being a light against it, a light of all lights. Flaws. I'm convinced that something is after me, appearing in mirrors, dreams, and places where no one could. It kind of falls within it. Um, Now... Her standard starting gear, already have that up. Standard starting gear for an adventurer. However, in her main hand, we have a rapier. In her off hand, we put a hand crossbow. That way she can dual wield them together. Scale mail uh, for added AC because she will be up close. And we're going to go from there. Now, this is just her level one. And here's our character. Uh, here she is, uh, Orlandi von Hellesin, a female human variant, Blood Hunter level 1. Here's her iconic picture. Here's her ability scores across the board right now. Now, she has, for a level 1, she's got plus 5, plus she's going to hit with both of these every round for attack and bonus actions. We have not picked when she gets to level 2 and 3, her abilities will change, and we're going to pick some stuff. Now, for this video, we're going to now level her from 1 to level 6 for two reasons. Number one, in our Tuesday night, late night Monster Hunter stream, all the characters start at 6 currently. So we want to have her leveled up. But also, getting her to level 6 kind of sees the build that I'm trying to build for her. So you can see all the skills as they play out and why I built this character the way I did. So let's do that part. Okay, we're going to go ahead and manage her levels. Okay, let's go to level two. Okay, at level two, she's going to pick up her fighting style. This is very important. Picking a fighting style for the Blood Hunter pretty much sets your path downwards. Okay? Um, because, because I'm having her do... Her, her crossbow will be one of her main weapons. I'm going to pick archery. She's going to get two bonus on attack rolls when you make with a ranged weapon. Now, if I wanted to, I could do two weapon fighting. But because my first hand weapon is always going to be fine, I don't need the modifier, that plus one modifier on my offhand weapon because I'm using a crossbow. So those people who said, well, you should use two hand fighting... Because that second weapon is a crossbow, 
and I have the crossbow feet, go with archery. Okay? Now, crimson right. This one's big. Now, when you pick a right, this will actually determine the, the bonus of that blood magic. Now, if she's a monster hunter, there are a lot of fiends that are immune to fire damage. So a lot of people would say, oh, if you're fighting undead and evil, you always want to use fire. Well, if you run across a fiend, a lot of fiends are immune to fire. So that may not be the best choice. The most, the two most common of these three that creatures have a tendency to be immune to are flame and ice. Very few, maybe just a basilisk, very few monsters are immune to lightning. But because she is an undead hunter, a zombie hunter, you know, a celestial backed fighter against evil, she's going to run into more undead that would be susceptible to her fire versus running across random fiends that may be immune. So the odds are still in her favor that she'll find things that are more susceptible to fire than she would running into something that's resistant or immune to it. So for this, and of course role play, we're gonna pick fire. Let's go to level three. Now, for a blood hunter, the choice you make at level three is probably one of the biggest choices you're gonna make in the character from now until the end of the game. And that's the blood hunter order. Now, you have choices in this, okay? And there are four, and each one of them is pretty amazing. In fact, we're gonna talk about these probably longer the most part of this video. So let's talk about the orders right now. In your orders, at third level, you commit to an order of Blood Hunter Martial Focus. Choose Order of the Ghost Slayer, Order of the Profane Soul, Order of the Mutant, or Order of the Lycan. All detailed at the end of the class description, the order you choose grants you special third level and then features at third level, and then again at 7, 11, 15, and 18. All right, we have all four listed here. Now, I wanna talk, the first one I wanna talk about is the Order of the Lycan. A lot of people go with this one. And especially if your Blood Hunter is gonna be a lot of melee, two-handed weapons, even maybe a great sword, great axe, where they're doing great weapon handling, they can turn into a hybrid werewolf. A lot of tankish abilities, a lot of fierce attacks. It can almost turn your blood hunter that can tend to be a little bit of a lightweight, nimble dexterity character into just kind of a sort of a dark Jewish with the ability to go aggressively berserker style. Now, a lot of people do that one because it's probably one of the easiest to play. But I don't see Violet turning into a dog anytime soon, so we're not gonna go with that one. I'll, there are a ton of videos about the Order of the Lycan, so if you wanna know more about it, just type in Order of the Lycan Blood Hunter 5E, and there's probably about 12 videos that tell you everything about it and why it's awesome. For the beginning player, and for those who wanna get a little Lycan-ish with it, from like Underworld or something, this is your one right here. Order of the Mutant. Order of the Mutant is most similar to the Witcher. Why? Because in the Witcher, you'll see him cast magic, potions, incantations that can change his body and adjust him. If you go into, um, into the Witcher, there's the episode where he drinks the potion, his eyes go black, he greases in size and power to fight off a monster. That's mutant level blood hunter. Uh, they use mutagens, potions, four different types of formulas you can pick up, uh, mutagen craft that will increase your character and buff them up in different ways. Buff up weapon power, resistance, um, uh, different abilities and whatnot. The key behind the order of the mutant is it is probably one of the more delicate ones. I tell people, think of it like a lightweight artificer, where an artificer 
can work with potions and build crafts and items and gear. And it's a constant balancing of skills and items and ingredients. And it can get a little bit overwhelming and it can get very, very complicated. Some players love complicated. Some players love straightforward. If you want to be Order of the Mutant, understand there's going to be a little bit more work involved. It's worth it. It's probably one of the strongest characters in the game, an Order of the Mutant. But we're not going to do that one either. Order of the Profane Soul. Now, this one is very interesting. When people talk about Order of the Profane, uh, Profane Soul, you're going to literally make a pact with an otherworldly patron. That patron could be on the light side, it could be on the dark side, but you're, you're giving a part of your soul to gain access to that patron's abilities. Similar to a warlock. Essentially, this is like making a ranger that can also play as a warlock in certain instances. Now, not all of them play like a warlock, for instance. You can choose different patrons with the Archfey. It's similar to ranger abilities and druidic abilities. Uh, sight, range, uh, vision, uh, stalking, those kind of hunter abilities. The Celestial, healing, um, uh, radiant damage, those type of things. The Fiend, yeah, undead. Bring a character down to zero, get extra points. The Great Old One, buffs and modifications. The Hexblade, Warlock abilities. And the Undying. Every time you kill someone, you get some hit points back. But what they all do is they allow access to Pact Magic, which is the Rite of Focus and Warlock spells. So if your person if let's say you decide to, instead of a dual wield crossbow and rapier like I'm doing, but you intend to stay further back as a blood hunter and say just use a heavy crossbow or dual wielding crossbows, having this one may be your best one because if you have access to the warlock spells, you have <laughs> Eldritch Blast. Right there is enough to get you in the game. Hexes. Protection against good and evil. Those are spells that are now within your repertoire. So you become a caster and a fighter. So it's kind of an, uh, an, an idea. However, the one that we're going to pick for Orlandi, our blood hunter, is this one. Order of the Ghost Slayer. Now, Order of the Ghost Slayer is if you wanted the abilities that you expect to see in paladins and clerics, but as a creature of the dark. So essentially what you've done is, is as the, as the Ghost Slayer, you are now taking an emphasis on the powers of the light. You're, you have resistance to necrotic damage. The damage of your right, all of your blood curses and stuff, changes from fire now to radiant damage, which is good against a lot of undead and fiends. Uh, your weapon sheds a light out to a radius of 20 feet. Yeah, so it glows. Your weapon also deals one additional Hemocraft die right of passage damage when you hit an undead. So now, let's say you add Hemocraft damage to your hand crossbow, which already is boosted plus two to hit because you're using crossbow expert and it's in your offhand, hand and you can use it as a bonus action. So now you're going in, you're hitting with your rapier, which is radiantly glowing and that's doing radiant damage. Then you're coming through with your right weapon damage and with your bonus action, you're hitting with a hand crossbow that's stacking the damage. And because your dexterity is so high, you're just throwing it through. Curse Specialist. Being at level 3, your Ancient Order teaches you Advanced Master over Blood Curses. You gain the additional use of Blood Maledict Feature. Which means not only do you get to do your Blood Curse once, you get to do it twice. And by the way, that will help buff 
and keep people from getting hit, give you the opportunity to do extra attacks. And remember, this character is going to get extra stuff coming because this is only level three. At level four, we get a little freaky because level four is an ability score improvement. Now there are a bunch of different options. Because you've already stacked crossbow, do you need to do a feat? Some people say yes, some people say no. But what happens if we're looking at our character sheet and we already know that your hand crossbow is set to plus seven on its attack roll? What if we took that and did, we went back and we did this. And we doubled up on dexterity. Now, now you're looking at 19. Your dexterity is plus four. Now you went from a plus six to a plus eight. Now, if you want to, you can take one of the points from dexterity. Even if you put it in constitution or intelligence, these two are set at 14. So it's not going to change the game that much because we know that our proficiency bonuses and our ability bonuses to attack or damage occur at even numbers. So we're just double stacking dexterity because at some point we'll get an extra dexterity point and that thing will boost up to 20. If you went back and changed your rollout, you could probably change your dexterity, take one of your points away from intelligence, your dexterity would be 20 right now instead of 19, and that would give your hand crossbow a plus nine and you're only at level four. Yeah. Let's go back. Level five. <laughs> level five for the Blood Hunters fun because you go to extra attack. Unlike the Ranger, unlike casters like clerics, level five, you get that extra attack like a lot of other melee classes. So now you're dealing with attack, bonus attack, attack, bonus attack. Right now you're sticking, you're stacking four attacks per round. Now you're just dealing a ton of damage. Let's move on to level six. This is the last level of this build that I'm gonna show you. At level six, we get a little fun. So now at level six, we get an extra blood curse. I like this one, binding. They must succeed in a saving throw or their speed is reduced to zero. No one's running away from you. They're stuck there. It's time to pile on the damage. Also, the brand of castigation, okay? Whenever you damage a creature with your Crimson Rite feature, your Blood Curse, you can choose to sear an arcane brand of Hemocraft magic, blood magic, into their skin. This happens automatically. All you gotta do is say it happens. It doesn't take the bonus action. It is a no action feature. You always know the direction the branded creature each time the branded creature deals damage to you or a creature within five feet of you, the creature takes psychic damage equal to your intelligence modifier. That's why we put a whole bunch of stuff in intelligence. Your brand lasts until you dismiss it or apply the brand to another creature. Your brand counts as a spell for the purposes of dispel magic, which means it can't be dispelled. <coughs> dispel level is equal to half of your Blood Hunter level, maximum of ninth level spell. Once you use this feature, you cannot use it until you do at least a short or long rest. Now, if we go back and look at our character, the intelligence modifier is two. That's not bad. It's not bad. So your intelligence saving throws are sevens, dexterities are plus five, plus sevens, your passive perception is 11, passive intelligence, investigation, and insight is 14 and 15. Your saving throws, you have advantage on arcana, history, investigation, nature, religion, survival. The only thing you're struggling with is going to be stealth, and that's only because you're wearing the scale mail. Now, it's not going to take much as far as finding items. If you get two items that boost your AC to plus one, possibly get a special 
uh, scale mail that allows you to plus two on your AC, you're at AC of 18. So your mitigation is there as well. So your initiative is plus four. Overall, it's a great character to play. A lot of fun. Now, I wanna show you something else. Let's say you said, okay, old school, I really like that option with the profane one. Can you show it to me? Absolutely, I can. Let's take a look. We're gonna edit our character. And I wanna show you the other option for this. If we go to our blood order and we change it from the order of the ghost hunter, the order of the profane soul, your otherworldly patron is dependent upon you. They each have a special thing. One of my favorites is the undying. Every time you kill somebody, you're going to get hit points back. It opens up the, the pack magic. It opens up the right to focus. On your ability score, I still had the dexterity high for that option. But because it was put the dexterity to 19, I'm going to change this to intelligence score. Because now, because I've done the undying and the otherworldly patient with profane soul, well, we have pack magic. So now we're going to go up to our spells. <laughs> because now we have warlock spells to choose from. We get two cantrips and three known spells. Of course, we always know first one you're going to grab on the cantrip list is always going to be Eldritch Blast. I do enjoy the green flame blade. I also in, enjoy Mage Hand. Uh, if you want to go and touch things, open doors from a distance, you can still do that. Give yourself some space. Some people like Booming Blade. I totally get it. Um, so we're going to learn Booming Blade just for this instance. Now, let's go to our level one. Level ones, I'm always going to take protection against good and evil. It's just a classic. I also like Hex. And this is one just kind of for me. I know it seems a little weird. I do like Hellish Rebuke. Now, Hellish Rebuke, the attack and save are dexterity. Remember, we are super high in dexterity for a reason. You point your finger at someone, a, a, a creature that has hit you or damaged you, and you are momentarily surrounded by hellish flames. The creature must make a dexterity saving throw, or it'll take 2d10 fire damage on a failed half as much. So when you get into that hardcore fight, when you when you get to level 5 and you have that extra attack, drop hellish rebuke on him. It's fun. Because you're already engaged with someone, and if my favorite part is, let's say you've set, you've set your curse of binding, your blood curse of, blo of binding, right? So you've done your hex spell at the beginning of the fight. It's binding. You attack someone, they attack you. You deal damage. Now their speed is zero, and they have disadvantage to dexterity saving throws, and you have hellish rebuke, which requires them to do a dexterity saving throw, and that's two d ten damage. So you see how that plays out very quickly? This, this character can be so much fun. On the screen, let's go to features and traits. Near the bottom of features and traits, you'll see right here. Because you are otherworldly patron, the undying, whenever you reduce a hostile creature to zero hit points using a weapon attack, you regain a number of hit points equal to the one roll of your Gila craft die. So you see what I'm saying? That's for the undying. If we were to go in and change this, the other one that I like is this one. Change your otherworldly patron to celestial. Follow me with this one. You don't want to go too dark with it. You still get all of your warlock stuff. You still get all your spells. However, Features and traits for Celestial are as follows. You can expend the use of your blood magic feature as a bonus action to heal one creature that you choose within 60 feet of you. They regain the number of hit points equal to one roll of your healer craft die plus two. Now you're a healer as well as being able to drop warlock spells. The Celestial is one of my favorite otherworldly patrons. 
You're still staying on the light side, but you have you have hex protection from good and evil, eldritch blast like like other warlocks. This is one of my favorite ways to play this character. Now, be, now what I also like to do is let's say because you have these spells, you want to switch this up a little bit. When we went in here and we put one point in dexterity and one point in constitution at the beginning, what if we change that out of constitution and put it to intelligence? That would raise our intelligence up to 16. Now, Eldritch Blast is plus six on the attack. And your, your, um, your spell attacks, your saving DCs are 14. And so now you're dealing with a little bit more of a hit. You're dealing with more of a of a real good movement. So these are all different options for you. This is what happens if you want to take, as I said, you want to play this game, but you want to add, you know, you just want to add a particular person that we all love. Uh, this woman right here you take this woman and you put her in this game and there you go orlandi von helicine <laughs> the female very human blood hunter level six with the order of the otherworldly patron as the celestial now you can also go with the other order where you're just doing damage without warlock spells and you're stacking damage, totally cool with that as well. It's completely up to you. Now, go out and have fun. You may very well see this character on the Tuesday night late game coming up soon. Because who knows, you may have to go fight the devil himself. And if you're going to do that, might as well bring the Dark Queen, right? Right. <laughs>